Welcome to our repair shop. I've got a chair here that is a trend that I'm starting to see in imported furniture. And the front leg assembly on this chair has just broken off. I have literally never seen this before. So I'm going to show you how to fix this and why I'm starting to see this in furniture that's being brought into our workshop. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. I'll flip over this chair, we'll take a closer look at what's going on. But before I do, I want to let you know we're also on Instagram. I've got a matching chair and the arm broke off that chair. And you can see here I'm patching in a new piece of wood. I'm not making a video on this, I'm showing step by step on Instagram how I go about fixing this. The name is below here and I'll leave a link in the video description as well. So I'm just going to set this part aside for a minute. And I use carpet underlay for padding my bench. At the front here, this lighter piece of wood here is where the wood separated. So it's the same here and here. And when I bring in the front leg assembly, you can see it's this part here that's snapped off. Now these are semi-formal chairs and that means they don't have any stretchers between here. So there's no support to hold these together. That's part of the problem. But there are techniques and woodworking practices that make strong chairs. Uh, this is not one of them. What you would have is dowels going into the leg from this part here and dowels coming in from this part here. Though these are flat pack chairs, uh, what they've done is use bolts to put these on here. So I can't change the way this is all configured. But part of this, what baffles me, is that section is about an inch of wood this way and about two and a half inches this way. There's no way that a domestic piece of wood in Canada would have broken off there and there. Uh, a piece of maple, a piece of oak, that wouldn't have happened. But this just separated. So the trend that I'm starting to see is the wood I think that's being used here is acacia, acacia and it feels heavy like hardwood it seems hard like hardwood, but the problem is it's extremely brittle. So shattering like this, uh, unfortunately, is not uncommon. I've seen this in a number of pieces. And on these two chairs, with the broken arm and these broken legs, the properties of the wood just isn't of the quality that should be used for furniture. So what I'm going to do is uh, glue this back in place, these two pieces, so they're in the exact same spot. And then what I'm going to do is, using the surface area here, shore up this piece of wood and get this strong enough that it will not break off again that direction. So there's a few steps involved in that, but the very first one is to glue this back in place the way it originally was. So I've got that block in there as a starting point. Now before you glue something together, you should always dry fit it first. And that is, put it together without any glue on it. And this is a perfect example of why. I've got an opening right here, and if I close that up, it opens up this area here. If I close this up, it opens up this area here. So I've got an angle bracket here that's getting in the way of my glue up, so let me take that out first. To glue this up, I'm using a PVA glue, uh, one that's not expired. I write my own expiry date on the bottom, about a year from when you open it. And I always use an artist brush when I glue things up and that way I make sure I've got glue on all the parts consistently and it's spread to maximize the glue surface. If you just squirt on a little bit and mush it around uh, you're not going to maximize that glue surface. So this really is the best practice for furniture repair and you can either squeeze it directly onto the workpiece or you can also I'm running out of glue here. You can also squeeze it on your brush to get it into spots that are more difficult to reach. Now another glue tip is when you're gluing things you cannot have old glue on them but this is a clean break 
So this one's easy. There's nothing to clean up. Just making sure that the wood fibers are going to go together. Now glue ups have to go together pretty quick unless you're using a slow setting glue. So that's why my clamp wall is right beside the bench. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a clamp on it to provide pressure so I've got a good locking joint this way. And that's aligned. And then I'm going to put pressure on it this way to pull those broken pieces together. So with the two forces on these joints, I'm going to get them back to the original strength of the wood because a properly glued wood joint is stronger than the wood itself. The glue on the chair is now dried so I can take the clamps off. Now the glue that I put in here with two bare pieces of wood properly glued, that glue joint is stronger than the wood fibers themselves. So I'm not concerned about my repair falling apart. But what I am concerned about is this wood has already shown me that it's fragile. So I don't want this chair breaking again. I'm going to reinforce the inside of this using the surface area to prevent it from breaking again. I'll show you in more detail what I mean by that, but what I'm going to do is take the chair apart. I'm going to mill a few parts, and then when I bring it back together, I'll show you how I'm going to use the physics of that surface area to prevent this from splitting again. I'm going to cut some thin strips of plywood, and if you haven't seen my dust collection hood before, uh, we've got plans for it on our website. I'll show you how well this works. Start by turning on the dust collector. So on the chair here, I'm going to use one of these blocks. By adding this block in here, I'm going to use all this surface area here to create a nice strong bond and prevent that leg from wanting to come off this way and splitting off that wood. But what it means is I have to modify this part a little bit because I can't put it back in that slot. So I'm going to miter this off here and you might be concerned that I'm losing strength, but I've actually got over an inch of surface here once I miter that, and an inch of glue surface across that and here, being on an angle, is going to be very strong. The original joint here had, uh, this is just a little less than a half inch, and on the end here, end grain is not strong, this is just over half an inch. So it's about an inch of surface with a compromised end grain joint there, this will give me an actually a much stronger joint glued from this component here onto the plywood. sand the finish off so I have a good gluing surface and then I glue it up. I want to make sure I cover the whole surface and glue 
on both sides to make sure I've got the optimum strength. I've done some test fitting of all the parts to make sure they fit before I put any glue on. I don't want to find any surprises. And it might seem odd that I've got these legs kind of loose, but as I put this in place, it tightens up. So it gets me into the right location so that the legs are going to go on properly. So I'm going to put some glue on here and you can see how it comes together. chair's ready for me to attach the seat, but before I do, I want to do an experiment here. This is a block that came off of the chair, and this is the wood that I think is called acacia. This is birch. This is what I used to replace it with. And what I thought I'd do is these are the same thickness. I thought I'd just use a chisel and try and split these to see how fragile this is. So I'm going to put these down here. I'll get out my mallet and try and use the same amount of force and a chisel and see how easily these split apart. You could tell it took a lot of force to break this birch and it broke clean off. There's no splinters there. This is a very dense wood. Um, it's uh, good for mimicking other woods because it takes stain so well. So that's why I use birch on this project. But in comparison, it didn't take as much force to break this apart. And the way it's breaking is it's actually splintering. It reminds me a lot of spruce, so construction grade lumber. Um, not a fan of this, but as I said, I've seen a number of pieces now come through the shop that are being imported and used a foreign wood like this, and they're just not holding up. They're very brittle. So this chair is now in working order, and if you're interested to see how I repaired this arm here, you can follow along step by step on Instagram and see what we're up to there. If you haven't subscribed yet, click over here, click on the bell icon, and you'll get notified every time we publish a video. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture. <music>